Don't turn us down at all. We certainly are Not here. Not even a little bit. Uh, laying down the law. I'm your host, Steve Foster, here with the former All-Pro NFL quarterback and East Carolina Pirate and proud Up it. winner. He is not best lost. Football, the best fact. football school in the state of North Carolina. All right. All right. I'm not going to disagree with you. I had a lot of folks. I mean, you could even yourself. say the Carolinas, period. But, you know, that might be a little risky. But well, we lost, the, we lost to South Carolina two weeks ago by, like, ten points, and, and which was a good game. We had opportunity to actually win that game. You know, so um, going in from where we are, from, from losing South, the South Carolina game to where we are now, man, I'm very proud of those guys because um, we showed up yesterday. And I'm proud of my – Nebraska Cornhuskers still putting foot up in the Miami Hurricanes. They should have been by more. Cannot believe that uh, soft roughing the passer call that they had. I said I would. That's get one it. college though that has really fell off and lost its dominance over the last over the years. Don't tell Warren Sapp that he think he think they still to you. What you looking at me for? I mean, you know what, <laughs> boy. <laughs> Tell you what, right. hey, Warren Sapp. Hey, they they don't don't have, that, that, was, that was a good Warren Sapp you did there. He <laughs> piss me off. We beat him and Ray Lewis. Yeah. Beat him and Ray mm-hmm. Lewis but in their house. But they yes. don't have the dominant. Yes, Ray. Yes, Warren. But in your house. But they don't have the dominant <laughs> swagger that they used to have for a whole decade. Yeah. That they had. No. You, know, you just didn't want to play Miami because they were just going to beat you up. They are going to talk trash to you. You just... They were just intimidating. That's right. And they, they lost that for some somehow. It's gone. It's gone. But i tell you who's back. Our Houston Texans insider, our man Jay Foreman. Jay, good morning and welcome back to Laying Down the Law. What's going on, fellas? I know you, I know you feel fairly well, just like I do, seeing, seeing the U go hey. back with, a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with an L. The U going back with an L. Yeah, I slept real good last night. You know, Nebraska um, – <laughs> You know they handled their business. I always, I mean, it was never a question. I didn't think that whether they were going to win. I think that you know Miami's the type of team. If you keep them around, uh, they could cause some problems. But Nebraska jumped on them pretty early, and uh, ended up you know closing it out. So it was a good game, but you know they definitely could have won by 17 plus points, like they should have. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the Houston Texans. They go on the road to the Meadowlands. And they are playing the New York Football Giants. I think opportunity for the Texans to get another victory. Oh yeah, most definitely. Eli Manning and that new offense uh, that was brought over uh, from Green Bay with uh, Bob McAdoo hasn't gelled yet. Uh, they they lost their defensive leader in the middle with John Beeson. Uh, the only thing that's going to hurt the Texans, I think, I just uh, read where Arian Foster is not going to be running this week. Uh, so look for a lot of short passes to all the different receivers. And Andre Johnson will probably take advantage of that depleted uh, New York Giants secondary. He is one of my fantasy football uh, selections. Uh, the <laughs> lieutenant governor for the Man. South Texas District of the AAU has Arian Foster, and I, I, got to, I hate I, to let him down with that uh, namesake, but uh, you know Man. you may see uh, some alternate rushers in the backfield today for the Houston Texans, and I think Jay Foreman, you spot on. The New York Football Giants are in disarray. Yeah, I mean, uh, they have, for whatever reason, they do have a talented roster, and they made some pretty good, decent off-season moves. Uh, but when you look at the offense and how it hasn't yelled, uh, it, it's been a big disappointment for the for the New York Giants fans and their organization. And it doesn't look like a, it doesn't look like it's going to be the regular year where Kaufman's going to start out 0-4 and end up uh, sneaking his way into the playoffs. I think this is going to be a long, long season for them. Could you, could... Looking at the New York Giants, and anybody can answer this question here, do you think it's solely on Eli Manning on his back to get this? Because he doesn't look the same to me. No. You know, he doesn't look the same to me. He throws, he still throws a crap load of interceptions. He hasn't – it's not like he can take the team and put it on his back and move the team down the field and put up points. But I see Victor Cruz dropping I mean, I look, balls. I look, I look, but, but still – His running I, I, game is but, messed but, up. But still, he's not able to get his team – Spirits and, and and lift their game of play like his brother. If you watch Peyton play, everybody's they're snapping their they, it's on you know because he gets everybody's level of game up because he expects that from you. But I don't see that from Eli. I think he, I think Eli needs to be rejuvenated the same way his brother was rejuvenated going from Indy to to Denver. And I'm not saying that uh, Eli needs to leave New Jersey, but maybe the coach needs to leave. They need to you know. Um, 
you know, and, and that 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 have been people have been talking about that. You know, that he needs to be. I like Tom Coughlin though as a coach. I mean, you you like a whole lot of them. That I mean, everything run, runs its course, Steve. It, it runs its course, and, and um, That's a good one point. of the year one of the years that he he won the Super Bowl, they were talking about putting him on the block then. But right. then when you win a Super Bowl, you, you know, you, you show some grace. But uh, I think still that it's run its course. You, you got an older gentleman, and you have a millennial mindset of ball players, and they're not meeting these guys where they are. They don't know what it takes to, to motivate, to rejuvenate them. They, they, they don't. They take advantage of their, of their desire to play football, but they're not giving them what they need to be excellent at playing okay. football. Okay, okay, valid That's point. point. What do you think then? Let's well, thank slip. you, Steve. I'm glad you <laughs> it's valid. I'm like, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Spence, Spence. Come on, man. <laughs> hey, Jay. <laughs> On the flip side of that, and I was trying to say that's a very good segue into the fact you have you have new blood for the Houston Texans and Bill O'Brien, and now to Spencer's point, you're seeing what happens when you do make that change at the head coaching spot. Yes. Uh, I mean, I think Bill O'Brien, I think his experience uh, at Penn State uh, made him even a better candidate to have a rookie success as a head coach. I think that uh, when you look at the, his, his grooming under Bill Belichick up in New England in their championship years, and then go to a hard situation at Penn State and get those guys to buy in. Kids, young kids, are that their first move when they have a new coach is to leave, and to get them to buy in uh, made it easier for him to get veterans to buy in. And even when Andre Johnson was gone, um, you get the feeling that he was always in constant contact with Coach O'Brien, and he definitely has bought in. So. Um, it is a different situation, I think, with Coughlin. If they continue to lose, I think his voice will become stale. Um, I think he's a good coach, and I think he's the right coach for his situation uh, because if there's anybody that can bring them out of a disarray, it's Tom Coughlin. The problem is, is that offense doesn't fit Eli Manning, and people don't realize how big an influence and how good uh, Kevin Gilbride was for Eli Manning. And, and the fact that they tried to run Kevin Gilbride out of out – of, uh, New York, and as fast as they did, um, is now looking like a bad move. Yeah, you know, be careful what you wish for. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the the change in coaches seems to be a positive in Houston. Uh, Leaving Kevin Gilbride out of Kil- Gilbride out of the equation for Eli, bad move. And again, to Spencer's point, the coaching changes make a difference, but sometimes go too far. Yes, sir, Spencer. Um, when we're talking about th- these elite quarterbacks in, in, in the NFL, uh, I do believe that they have a lot of, of say-so on plays that are being ran, especially someone who's won the Super Bowl for you twice. Elite pl- elite quarterbacks do, yes. They do. I mean, right You're now right. you don't consider him as being one, Jeff? Yes, I okay. do. Yeah, so, I'm, well, I'm specifically speaking, like, to Eli, I'm just wondering what his, his contribution was to um, even bringing in a new coordinator – of, of allowing him to continue to do things that, that allow him to be comfortable as a, as a quarterback? Well, a lot of times new co- offensive coordinators come in, and one, yes, they try to tailor the offense to their personnel, but yet and still they are coaches, and some coaches can be selfish and, and say, this is my offense, you're going to run it the way I want you to run it. You know, regardless, I don't care if you're Peyton Manning or Eli Manning or Jeff Blake, or, I don't care. You, this is my offense, this is how you're going to run it. So sometimes you have you bump into that also yeah. as well, and, and sometimes you know, a good offensive coordinator you have to meet your players halfway. Mm-hmm. You know, hey, this is my offense, but I'm going to tweak it to where it helps my players become successful, and I get the most out of my players. So. Jay Foreman, our Houston Texans insider, is that also the same way for defense? Yeah, and sometimes you get coaches and coordinators that that. You know, on paper and, and conceptually, you know, when they were pitching themselves to the head coach or GM or whoever that's going to hire them, sounds good. But in, in, but in reality, uh, a lot of coaches are being selfish and they're just stuck in their ways where they just want to run their system how they want to run it. And it doesn't matter who's running it, but if it doesn't fit the personnel, uh, it's not going to work. And, and right now it looks like, you know, conceptually on paper, yeah, it'd be great for Eli Manning to be a 70% completion rate and get the ball out of his hands quicker. But when he was at his best, is when he would extend plays and guys would get deep, and you had a Hakeem Nick and a Victor Cruz that could get behind opposing cornerbacks. And you know, the, you know, the, his success is built on play action pass and behind a power running game. That's why, why he was successful, not because of his completion percentage. His completion percentage, when it was at its highest, 
when you had, you know, Brandon Jacobs, uh, Derek Ward, and, 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 and running back like that, Ahmad Bradshaw getting uh, the hard yards, and it made the passing uh, routes and, and, and passing coverage that they were going against a lot easier. Absolutely. Jay, tell us about today's game. Uh, what's your prediction for a score? Well, I think it's, it's a game that Houston needs to come out and start fast. Obviously, with Aaron Foster out of the game, uh, it's going to be, I think, a young guy like Alfred Brown or Alfred Blue, excuse me, is, is going to step up because they really like him, and he brings that physical nature to him, to the running game. But then, um, as far as defensively, they need to get into Eli Manning's face and, and get him confused and get that first turnover so where they're not getting any confidence at, at home. If they get off to a good start of being the New York Giants, they could be a very long day for Houston because it's almost a trap game where you, you have an opponent that doesn't have any confidence. They, they, they're they going into the game and expect to lose. Uh, Houston's been playing well, been playing sound football. They don't need to go to New York and have a game to where they're outside of their identity as far as losing the turnover battle and then obviously losing the field, field position battle as well. Absolutely. So uh, the prediction on the score today? Uh, I think it's going to be 31-21. Uh, I think Houston's going to yeah, officially win by 10, but I think they'll be winning the whole game, majority of the game, by uh, 17 points. So I think it's not going to be a close contest, and I envision the Houston Texans are going to take care of their business. There it is. Our Houston Texans insider, former starting linebacker for the Texans, Jay Foreman. And, Jay, always good to have you on the show and that big red moving and churning in Lincoln as well. Uh, We'll certainly talk offline. Be safe in your travels, wherever they are. And uh, you know we're looking for you down here, man. You got to come see us. We appreciate it. You have a great day. All right. Jay Foreman, our Houston Texans, Cider Picks 31-21. We're going to come back with the AAU Focus on You Sports. We got him right here, our man, Rod Chico Tanner. We're going to have also in the next hour a very good friend of mine, former attorney from the NFL offices, the NFL PA two-time general counsel uh, for the Cleveland Browns and the San Francisco 49ers and an attorney to talk to us about that issue of child abuse and different things like that uh, because we had some questions with that as well. So a lot coming up for you. Stay with us right here on Laying Down the Law. (laughs) 